Um, I, was, I was getting too hot. You know, when, it, when that sun, I, I don't know, I didn't come from uh, Arizona. Cruz, you know, I didn't come from Arizona, from Phoenix or Texas or anything like that. And I, I uh, pretty much grew up around the Puget Sound area where we, where we liked the sunshine and moss and, and we liked uh, a lot of mushrooms growing around, fungus, among us, and all that stuff. Because I like the I like the uh, the dampness and the rain, but God blesses us all the time because He is the one who reigns in our hearts, isn't He? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I was I was thinking while we were singing these these hymns and stuff how it brings back old time memories when we were younger in our days and in, in our lives, and um, I like to kid around and and. Um, I ponder upon things like when I was a little kid, I did live in a town called Poodle down by Mount St. Helens. And, uh, Mount St. Helens, you know, was a big volca volcano that exploded in, back in 1980, May 18th. And uh, the Lord gave me a song about that. And, and it's uh, a way that God speaks to us is through different things. And sometimes we're given to where we just ignore God. We we don't think of that God speaking to our hearts and speaking to what we're doing and, and the influence that He does have on our lives. But um, when you see something and you feel something and you hear something like Mount St. Helens exploding and erupting, it draws the attention of those people that are around. And believe me, I think a lot of people, when Mount St. Helens exploded, God got their attention. And it literally shook the earth. And it literally exploded with a big boom. And he was able to hear it from miles and miles around. And he was able to see the ash go way up into the sky. And just to think of something that has that kind of power, and we think that's awesome power. And it is awesome power to us. But to God, that was minuscule power. It was very little power it took to do that. And in doing that, he was saying, see what I could do? See what I could do? And, and look how many lives it changed that day. Look how many lives it changed. And I'm reflecting on that because I'm wondering, what does it take to make a change in our lives? We know that there are things that go on in our lives that need to be changed. Not one of us are perfect. Not one of us will ever be perfect except that through the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that's what the living word says. It takes God's help. It takes the spirit of God to be our inner strength. It takes the lamb of Christ, his shed blood, to wash our sins away. It takes Him. But it also takes a part on our side. We need to be proactive in our relationship with God. He didn't call us to be any one particular denomination necessarily. He called us all to be Christians. He called us all to have a personal relationship with Him. He said, he said to us, he said, No man shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but through Jesus Christ, my son. And you know, I'm kind of simple-minded. And, and that goes clear back my whole lifestyle. I've been very simplistic. It doesn't really take a Bible scholar or a theologian 
to tell me that God's word is the absolute truth. Because God is truth. He says, I am the truth and I am the way. And I don't know about you, I, I don't worship an inferior God. I worship a God that is true and a God that performs and a God that holds true to his word. And I can remember as a kid, living there in that little town poodle, we lived in a, we, we first lived in a tar paper shack. I can remember when I was about four or five years old, living in a tar paper shack, and we had a dirt floor until we were able to get something, until dad and, and my uncle built a house. And they were building two houses. They, they were building a house for my uncle and, and for my dad. And we did have oatmeal. <laughs> and, and, and there was little bugs in there. And, and, and I remember Tex Ritter singing this song about bull weevils. And I was like, what, the, what in the world is a bull weevil? And, and a bull weevil is a little tiny. <laughs> tiny bug, you know, and it will get into grains. It will get into to like uh, wheat and oats and barley and, and grains and, and stuff. And um, I can remember my mom telling me, oh, those are bull weevils. Well, we didn't have much money, and so we didn't throw things out, but we, we, we uh, got rid of as much of those bull weevils as we could and, and whatnot. But, you know, they, did, they didn't hurt, hurt you. And when you're blind, you don't see those things. And even as I got older, um, when, I, when I was out working, I was living in an apartment. And my girlfriend came over, who is my wife now, and she pulled out my breadboard and she says, you know, you got bugs all over that breadboard. And I thought, I kept a real nice, clean house. You know, I scrubbed the kitchen down and sprayed the counters with uh, Lysol water or Clorox water and clean. And, and here I'm making these sandwiches and carrying to work all the time on this <laughs> breadboard that have these bugs. And, you know, you don't notice them. But that's the way sin is, how sin creeps into our lives. A lot of times we don't notice it, you know, and we still have to keep clean, and that's the way it is with God. We 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 have to keep constantly cleaning our lives. We all we, we have to constantly ask God for forgiveness and changing and participating and making that change. Well, with bull weevils, one thing I learned is that you keep your stuff in an airtight container like Tupperware or Rubbermaid. You got to keep it in there. You don't keep it in a paper sack. You don't keep it in a cloth bag the way it comes originally because you get bull weevils. And, and that you got to have, you, 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 even using Clorox water didn't keep those bugs out. Well, come to find out, I had to have the apartment management. It wasn't just me. It was everybody in the building had bugs. The, the building was bug infested. So I, I had to go to the, the, the head of the apartment management, and they, they sprayed the building. You know, they, they had fumigators come in, cleanse out those bugs, and got rid of them, hopefully. And, but when you're <laughs> blind and you can't see that, how many of you are, are blind and you don't see the things in your life? You know, like I, I, a lot of times I don't see the sins in my life and they're like character defects. And, and it takes somebody to point them out to me. Like in that case I was sharing with you, my girlfriend, my, my wife, before she married me, she, she says, Mel, you got bugs. And I, and, and I thought, I got bugs, I gotta have to do something, I, I gotta change. Uh, you know, I had, those bugs would still be there and still in my life if I didn't do something to change, to change the situation. 
So I had to go to the head of the apartment management and complain. Well, other people did the same thing. So that promoted the apartment management to do something to come in and cleanse out those bugs, to cleanse out that sin that was in my apartment and in my life. And that's the same thing we got to do. When we see something and something pointed out to our lives, sometimes we got to listen and say, yeah, God, you know, I do have a big mouth. Yeah, God, I do have an attitude. Yeah, God, I, I, I do this or, or whatever the case may be. And, and that's something I got to work on and I got to change. I got to cleanse that out of my life. I got to, I got to be different. And that's how we become a new person in God. And that's how you become a new person in God. And you know, we're going to be that way until God takes us home. You know, we all know that. We, we, we know that we're going to be that way until God takes us home. But the thing is, is that God is merciful. He's our Father. He loves us. He gave his life for us. And as long as we're sincere in our hearts, and we know that we want to be Christ's followers, it don't make any difference if you call me Mel or Jack or Bob. Just don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> it don't make no difference if I'm a Methodist or a Baptist or, or what, whatever, or Catholic or, or, or whatever the, the label may be. Just as long as I love Jesus and I live by his principles and his values and I live on his truth and I live for him because he's the lover of your soul, he's the one that forgives me. He's the one that's going to see my home is made in heaven. He's the one that says, I promise you. This very day he told the, the thief on the cross beside him, he said, this day you'll have a mansion. This day you'll have a place in heaven with me. See? Because he asked God to forgive him. Right there on the cross. cross. The cross makes a difference. And we got to come to that time in our lives when the cross makes a difference in our lives. we got to leave everything else behind and know that it's your personal relationship with God that matters. That's all that matters. It's how you love Him and He loves you. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for your lovely word, Lord. I thank you for the price that you paid. I thank you for making a way out of no way for each and every person who chooses to have that personal relationship with you. Lord, I thank you that we can clean those bull weevils out of our hearts, that we can clean that sin out of our lives, and that you make us new in you and that we participate in that relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah. amen.